much stuff. I mean, okay, in the general perspective, there's so much stuff that you can't, that you wouldn't want to say, you wouldn't say in public anyway, right? You just wouldn't, you wouldn't go there. Yeah. But the, the stuff that you do, that you, that you don't mind saying in public, like your borderline yeah. speculative thought processes, uh, <laughs> that's what you get in public spaces, right? Because everybody's a little bit on the fence as to whether they want to go and say something definitive, because yes. that's when people start going, but you said, and then, you know, it's like, here's some, yeah. advice. like you want my, my deep, honest, heartfelt advice, even mm. though there's only a few people in here right now, but I'll, I'll probably say it again later is yes. even though I won't do this very often as far as like advice, but mm. if people just were to see all the stuff that's going on across Twitter and maybe even telegram too on how worried people seem to be about weird shit, right? Yeah. That if you realize that the invested people that are already invested, that aren't paying any attention to any of this shit, are the ones that are probably going to win the most. Period. Yeah, oh, that's, 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 yeah. that's a point. That's a point because, um, <clears throat> I mean, I, I'll just to catch the occasional thing here and there. And, and if, I won't get too deep into many conversations, but, um, there has been some stuff during the week that I did catch uh, in a positive way, exa exactly on that subject, which is what one of the fresh eyes seeing when they come in and, um, how much of a focus, um, or actually how much of an opportunity they have to, to tell, to, to hold a mirror to us, um, as far as what they see. And, and it's like, it's feedback. So it, it's interesting. Um. You know, uh, Lit and uh, Adam Stokes did a really good live stream, um, and, and and Lit was was sort of like um, going, having a few revelations. Going, you know, he started off with, you know, teaching noobs on on Pulse Chain what to do, you know, what wallets to use, all, all those sort of important things, and then it, it sort of as, as as his knowledge grew, his interest grew to a high level uh, discussions and stuff like that. And now the new person coming in, uh, where do they go? <laughs> that was the gen general gist of it, and I thought, yeah, no, that was uh, that was interesting. But um, I I was hope I would hope that in the efforts of a lot of the education that we would do, that we would also have mid discussions of that during those educational talks. Like I only say that because I do that on Telegram when yeah. I'm in those chats, letting people know is if you're paying attention to what I'm saying, you know, mm. without getting too, too deep in the weeds about a lot of shit, but just being really realistic with how things work, period, yeah. on how to derive price, period, and that's all anyone cares about, and you need to know how that works to the most, mm -hmm. the, the deepest extent, and all the rest of the stuff, the talk, and the chitter-chatter, and the rest of that stuff about... Uh, emotional behavior, highs and lows, is just yeah. a distraction from what actually derives prices, period, right? Yeah. And that's yeah. buys and sells. And what, where is the liquidity that where those buys and sells are at when a router decides to take its, its route, mm -hmm. right? And, and it, you really need to know those things as a market maker, period. You have to know those things if you want to be successful. Now, what we had with yeah. Pulse Chain and PulseX is a bunch of people that are getting into providing liquidity and doing things like farming or whatever the hell, right? They don't know what it is, the mechanisms they're actually working with in those smart contracts. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, there's people that don't even know what wallets to use. Well, there's a lot of new other wallets, but then you got the other side of the spectrum that's just pulling out the negatives. But you got to be aware for this and this and this. And yes, you're right. You're absolutely yeah. correct. You need to warn people about certain things, but not everything's fucking dangerous. You need to teach people what to look for. Don't tell it. Yeah. Don't have people dependent on you to come to you to tell. So you're always telling people what they should be doing all the time. That is bad. And I see a lot of, a yeah. lot of influencers that get themselves into that trouble because it's like why don't you just tell these motherfuckers you know just yeah. tell them how to when you say do your own research help them out help them with where they can go and get the tools to bookmark things and stuff like this just 
do a little yep. bit of that and help yourself in the future because what you're going to end up having is other educators, other people who people like to love to tell people that they know shit. They do. They absolutely love it. <laughs> right? <laughs> especially when yeah. they now, yeah, especially when they now know that they know more shit than other people. When a hundred thousand more people are coming through the doors and nobody knows what wallet to have. Meanwhile, yes, we would like to have deep conversations about liquidity and market making and da 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 da. And where is the money? And where are the routers going? And da 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 and all these other things like yeah we could have that's why my conversations over in those telegram chats are like six seven eight twelve hours long sometimes right wow. like, i'm not even shitting you but dude like it i'll go through charts and share my screen and like show everybody all this stuff but i'm not giving you not at all giving you in the future, on my crystal ball, the price is going to go here right. or otherwise. It's, this is where the yeah. volatility starts and stops on, where the money's at right now. If the price goes up to here, there's no more money up above there. There's pretty fucking simple to see. Here you go. And it may take eight yeah. hours to like tell people, because I'm not just going to say that. That's kind of I want to capture the audience and let people actually know what's going on and how it works. And it might take... Like, five different angles of me uh, going at it in different levels of thought process for everybody that's in the room to get it eventually if that's the case because a lot of people during like the eight hour ones they're at work they're just got their earphones yeah. and they're not talking to me or nothing like that and i know that right they're they just want to listen to what's going on and then try to capture some of it because they know that hopefully eventually they'll capture they'll get me in another session where i'm quote unquote teaching but I'm not I mean yes. I'm just helping people like I always really have and I did the same thing yeah. too started with wallets but I'm not on YouTube because uh, th that's where you have to really worry about your public speaking like I curse on here because I don't give a shit right but I'm there yeah, 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 yeah. Mind my manners and all this and I'm bad with that I'd get banned as <laughs> like quick you know <laughs> I'm, not so, very I'm, friendly. I'm sorry I'm not. Yeah, I got, I got I got kicked off YouTube in 2016. Uh, there, was a, there was a real crypto culling back then, and uh, yeah, I was I was caught in that. And uh, they actually just gave me my channel back. But uh, yeah, I'm not interested in YouTube. Um, I mean, you gotta you gotta pick one channel and and stick with it, you know. Um, and I understand what you're saying about the, you know, you want to give people uh, an insight to the to the processes that you use to make better decisions, you know, and uh, educate them in that way. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah, instead well, of just yeah, telling them what to do? Well, I mean, because what you're doing is you're setting yourself up with people who, like I said, want to go tell other people how much they know because they went and learned something. And they didn't have to spend $1,000 to go to somebody's. Like, imagine that I, did, I had to, went and did that. Like, like yeah. the only way to hear me say anything about anything on the blockchain is you got to pay me $100. You, you know what yeah. I mean? like to get in my private course and I'd be in here talking about that instead right now. But I've even found a better way to do this type of stuff. Like the Ocelots, and now I'll just go ahead and I'll shamelessly show, but the Ocelots and yeah. that I've been going on, if people that are, I, like I said, I don't like to make definitive statements. So I, some people may speak in uh, hypothetical terms or what are metaphorical terms or whatever the hell, right? I'm not going to do that. Like if you yeah, go and yeah. you, you, uh, if anybody were to participate in Ocelot's and mint an NFT or just have one or whatever, then I'm making a definitive statement that your participation will be rewarded. Right now, whatever that is, there's like multitudes of things that I could that I could establish. I already have established the means and strategies and other things to yeah. do those types of things, and then build layers on top of those things to be able to know that. I can, we can develop an ecosystem that's completely separate from the rest of this, this garbage, not garbage. I don't want to say garbage because yeah, that, yeah. that, that would suggest that, that it's, that it's trash. Like you wouldn't want to have, but I mean like the ecosystem garbage that comes with all these types of things. Like people just want to click buttons. They don't really want yeah. to have to talk about a lot of shit and let the founders go establish whether they want to have negativity on their side or whether they want to sit there on the shiny hill being the Vegas, right? With the flashy lights and all all the stuff that says hey come over here and try my shit right yeah, that's it yeah, yeah. all you need i don't need to talk shit about anybody else and whatever they've got going on if they're doing nefarious shit it will come out on its own it's not something i have to be involved with or anybody else right and yeah we've got a lot of that going on a lot of people that are yeah. pointing their fingers at all these things and it's like just if we stopped a lot of that stuff, like got to the point where we were pissed off in a conversation, you're just about to name call somebody and then you just didn't do that instead. 
it yeah. would actually be like uh, probably more than likely a good conversation for people to listen to because nobody wants to hear yeah. that point where you turn into a child right that stuff but yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes a good conversation anyway exactly exactly um what you call rubbish i call uh uh no- noise uh noise narratives and biases <laughs> um and and uh the f- the first thing if you if, if you look at yourself introspectively uh i try i try to and um i just remove re- remove try and remove that sort of stuff in my vocabulary and just be a, a student like and I just try to learn um i'm always trying to learn and that's why you, you, you build your your value in, in the marketplace you know one one day you know you, you'll be just like picking up a, a little bit here and there and just trying out you know with with low amounts and just trying different protocols and developing your own opinion but 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 at some point you gotta you gotta just dive in not to say bet bet the bet the house but but uh try a few things and, and develop your own opinion about stuff um and um there's so many opinions out there um and like most people it's quite funny i i, I find it quite I find it quite amusing that nearly everybody has got uh, has got some sort of bias uh or biases i do um but it comes out when they speak especially on youtube you know uh, but they don't realize it because they got a, a promotion attached or something like that or you know they, they formed a view based upon their worldview uh and now that's the only the only way you know sort of thing there's, there's very very few you know unbiased sort of like very level level-headed discussions that go on and uh Obviously, when it's polite discussion, it's a, it's a lot better to listen to, eh? Well, hi everyone, uh, Daniel here. Hey, hey Daniel. Uh, thanks for having us and Army. And um, yeah, cool. Good question about the um, the news and um, executioner. <laughs> Shout out to you. Uh, you're already like talking like uh, you have a five thousand audience. Great. Um, actually. You, you know where I jump in um, when we're talking about bias? I think uh, we cannot afford this. If uh, you, you hear me always talking about the importance of 2024, right? And we have this year, um, we have an unfolding bull market. We have not only the hard uh, core crypto people in their business and, in uh, you know, we are not only approaching post chainers to use post chain even more, but we want to reach out to other chains and also to mom that, you know, these people who are just joining right now for the first time crypto in general. And mm-hmm. what uh, executioner said, yeah, of course, click buttons and that's it and make it easy. And so my news that I actually filter is I try to get. Um, inspiration from from so many ends like for example adam stokes but also from uh, crypto profeta um lit had an excellent guest um talking today uh or was it yesterday um it it's worth it uh, to to listen to it. it i think four hours um four hours of alpha very good reminder uh, every founder should listen to it again it's not necessarily about the calculations, but it's about the fundamentals that we really be friendly to other chains. We shouldn't talk uh, like down to them because we want yeah. them. When we paradigm, for example, um, how do we get money here? How do we get funds and capital into Pulse chain? Yes, onboarding, but yeah, we can, you know, bring some more cash in the same pulse chainers over and over, but there's a limit to it. But what we can do is actually, and this is a paradigm shift in the classic approach on how we are talking to our community, is Mm -hmm. why don't you consider, in fact, using your capital that you have, going to other chains, made use of their yield producing uh, protocols, Produce that yield from other chains and bring it here. Yeah. So I know, for example, Marco the Hexagon was uh, really scolded for doing so on Titan X. But actually, um, actually, that's the only right thing to do. Looking for opportunities. We are in crypto. We are not only in post chain. We are crypto people. 
DeFi yeah. people. We appreciate the qualities of our, our post chain, but also we want to bring capital here. And I think um, we should be creative in this. You, so. you make it. You make a really good point because I mean, what, 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 I mean, you got you guys that are already on Pulse Chain already know it, but like, you can you can literally you can literally with very very low fees um, get in and, and play around with quite a few things and not break the bank on gas. Um, you know, I've I've been through a, a lot of different cha chains over the years, and um, you know, I transacted for like one cent. You know, I mean. <laughs> You know, there's only products uh, as L2 is coming out, even getting close to that. You know, so um, and even you know, we're even still still cheaper than, than many of them. So uh, you make you make a good point. Is to have a, have a have a good play around. Uh, and and he, I'm just uh, what I was saying was uh, in, in Pulse Train, it's, it's, a, it's a place where you can do it. Yeah, um, and it's but, not, yeah, it's not only um, you know, not every idea must be the right one. But the approach mm. and the, the, the filter mechanism, uh, how we are filtering the news and the opportunities. Yes, there are a lot of noises right now, what's going on with hacks and all this stuff. Everyone has an opinion. But basically, what we want to fall back to is uh, forging relationships, um, partnerships, um, looking for the best infrastructure that we even can recommend what Hexecution has said. Uh, including that material into our education to others or in our recommendations and we better be well skilled and also experienced doing this so you know um, infrastructure uh, plays a role and uh, so yeah filtering basically all the information that we have not necessarily for the emotional uh, um, trigger but uh, for the uh, really helpful content and, and yeah. going back to the basics creative yeah, yeah. yeah i think that one of the things that we would probably have to establish is a whole other set of influencers who are willing to dox themselves that aren't already have their own self-interests for making the decisions in which they do because this is what i what i would do is understand that one of the hurdles that we need to do is figure out onboarding, right? And so if you were to set out a poll and ask everybody, like, send me, send me the, the actual reason so I can read what difficulties pose to you to, when uh, you want to do an onboard, right? Like, if you were to spend and take the time to go talk to somebody about just Pulse Chain in the first place to onboard them to Pulse Chain, and you know that feeling that you get right away, whether the person's actually listening or not. So you spend the time, you get the one person, right? Let's say there's 200,000 people already on Pulse Chain. We all get that one person with that feeling when we're talking to them, like this motherfucker's actually going to do it. Now we've got 400,000 people, right? Now we need to educate them. But it starts right away because if you start telling them to go the Ethereum route, then they're going to already have a lot of problems, right? And I believe... Mm -hmm. that there's already other portals that go through BSC and Arbitrum that are connected to uh, centralized exchanges like Coinbase or whatnot that you can avoid going through Ethereum all the fucking together. And you don't have to spend all those fees and all the rest of that shit. And if we, if we had the capabilities, like if I had a bunch of influencers that I was like, hey, motherfuckers, go tell everybody this shit right now. Right, so we can avoid all this other bullshit. Then they would, right? And only I and I and I do have influencers in a way in certain uh, currencies on Pulse Chain that if I go say, hey, this is a narrative that needs to be go put out there for whatever reason, like if there's some knowledge that was known ahead of time to let people know, right, what's going on, then yeah, I can get a reaction in certain things, but that's only because it serves them in their own self-interest. Now going and onboarding people and doing all these things, like the way that you would go to Arbitrum and BSC would be through like, I believe it's SparkSwap, I want to say. Yeah. Correct. Spark swap. Yeah. Spark swap. Spark swap. Uh, is, is the is the link. Yeah. Right. So now now what I'm doing is now I I like the guys from Spark Swap. That has my feelings on it. Have nothing to do with the actual matter of the fact that people don't come and listen to me unless they're people who already kind of know the type of shit that I'm gonna lay down. 
which a lot of people would just call that alpha or whatever the fuck that really means. I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but it, like I said, you need to get people direct routes, easy routes, cheap routes in and out. And we need that voice yeah. to go out there. So that way, when somebody says, well, the reason why I can't get my onboards in here is because it goes through fucking Ethereum. It costs a hundred dollars. Well, we, okay. So we'll fix that problem. Now what's the next fucking problem? What's the next yeah. thing that, that you need to do? You need to carry around charts for recent activity. Um, and then while you're showing them a, ch a chart that has a bunch of green candles on it, you're sitting there telling them about how future performance isn't isn't <laughs> indicative on past performance. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no. Hell fucking no. What we do is we teach them about liquidity, where the money's at, why it's there, which routes are being chose, which ones you want to get in, where you're going to watch things, Hex, WinBot, and all these other bots that are on Telegram. Yes, Telegram's yeah. very bad. If you want to go on to Telegram and you want to just start speaking to random fucking things and clicking on hyperlinks, not the fucking place for you. And oh, really quickly... You would you were going to be the type that's going to end up doing the wrong thing, and get accidentally giving your seed phrase away, right? Well, actually, the, big, the biggest risk is, uh, is is connecting one of one of those scam links to a, a wallet drainer uh, contract, and like yeah. poof, all your all your primary gas assets are gone out of your wallet just in one click. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there's all those warnings and things like that where you're going to go. But when those people need to know those specific things, that's when you give them those warnings and you show them those things. Like, me being an admin for Hedron and Icosa, I all the time get DMs from random bots and random accounts that just got created all the time about come over here and look at this thing so we can help out your cryptocurrency and i'm like do you not understand what immutable contract code means mm. right like this <laughs> this is community <laughs> operated man <laughs> it's an easy job uh, but <laughs> It's, it's, it's true. Uh, just, just while we're, we're just pausing for a second, anyone just want to just gra grab, grab, grab the mic and uh, uh, or request the mic, and I'll bring up as a speaker. Uh, but yeah, you make some good points, executioner. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and definitely, yeah. it's, community, it's com community run, right? Yeah. So go ahead. But yeah, um, when, when we're talking about onboards, you know. So we have actually different kind of onboards. We have the absolute new people to crypto. Okay. It's not that easy to pick them up, but you know, we, we have to do the hard work, our homework. That means uh, doing tutorials, really the simple tutorials, how to install a MetaMask. And it uh, has never been easier with the AI uh, video makers nowadays, you, you know. So I think um, PostChain should, or the, the Telegram and uh, Discord should be flooded with these kind of simple tutorials. That's one thing. But the other mm -hmm. thing is that we are actually talking also to DGENs. I know DGENs are not very, um, you know, there, there is from, from the legacy uh, influencers, <laughs> let's call it <laughs> that way. That's why we also need new influencers actually, because um, there's so much um, self-interest and so much, um, denial of uh, of of the necessity of uh degens we need degens and we have degens in every um you know uh category from hundred dollar to beyond 50 million and so these degens actually um they are nomads they go where the money is yeah, yeah. and you know there is the word of mouth and so where, how can you make money? So you cannot necessarily invent the wheel five times, okay? You can invent it maybe three times new, but five, there is a limit to, to what you can produce, right, uh, legally. And then you have the opportunity, for example, shaking on the dogma that, that referral commissions, affiliate mm -hmm. uh, bonuses, that there are actually uh, something shady they are not shady they are a very legit instrument and i'm even thinking about uh, other protocols uh, for the future to build um maybe even a second or possibly even a third downline level because this is what money brings this is what also brings new influencers from other chains who are actually covering bsc or ethereum who say hold on if i recommend something uh, if i'm talking about something uh, I only have my first level audience, but I have a big network of people. 
yeah. and these people talking to their people and then I'm you know I don't earn if there's only one level so I think uh, there are many many areas where we can work on um, you know you're right you're right every uh, time uh, an affiliate deal or, um, I mean, a lot of the multi-level stuff, people go, they poo-poo it because uh, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, it's a pyramid, it's a, you know, it's a prism, it's a, a whatever. Um, and um, it, it is designed, or, or an affiliate type deal like Amazon is, is designed to replace Amazon's um, marketing budget. So if you are not budgeting for marketing, how many groups do you go into where the community is saying, when marketing, when marketing? Well, if you if you do like a, a one or two or very uh, low level amount of uh, amount of levels, um, I'm not sure if you're going beyond three, you know, it start you start to get into that MLM type of thing. If you want to do like an affiliate deal, like an Amazon, uh, I think it can be very powerful to replace uh, having to fund con continuously fund uh, um, marketing costs. Yeah, you're right. So, um, mm. Basically, you know. When you listen to Adam Stokes, if you actually also listen to yourself when you do your research outside of Pulse Chain, then you know we have nothing to lose when it comes to to the reputation. How yeah. the general public looks at Pulse Chain if they even notice it. So yeah. it's a young, it's a very young um, chain. So every young chain has as a symptom has a lot of scams. So we have to outperform them. We were there last week. Yeah, we said this already. But the point is that um, we have nothing to lose. So as long as we can prove our sincerity by fulfilling our um, announcements and what we advertise, so yeah. we can come up with experimental models. And we have to be different than now. Uh, you know, we have to shake on on dogmas. There are yeah. so many dogmas in, in the whole space. And yes, I know it sounds shady two or three levels down line and personally i'm a real friend of that because right now i'm in a dilemma p2x has one level only yeah so we give an affiliate uh, or a referral um commission or bonus but actually what about you what about mm -hmm. executioner who talks uh, uh with his network about this yeah who you know what about for example uh people who are well connected so mm -hmm. they are talking to their first level. They are talking, you know, in their in a circle. Yeah. They carry the message further, and then you know nobody earns really what they actually deserve for building a network over years. So yeah. that's why I think it's just fair to yeah. If we build the audience, yeah, I understand what you mean because uh, any sort of like. Uh, I hate to use the word influencer or so someone that's in the public eye that has has a bit of a, a fan base or a following um, that's built up over time. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, competing, you know, like uh, advertising and stuff like that. Um, that they like, like, throw 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 money at them to try and buy their opinion. Um, but yeah, that makes sense. What you're saying does make sense. You know what's even more funny about that is if I did start a paid group. And charge people like 150 bucks to come in to just have access to hear me speak about whatever they want to talk about. Mm -hmm. More people would do it for yeah, some reason because I do it on a whim and I do it for free and stuff like yeah. that. Uh, there's there's very few people. And you know what's funny is some of the guys that were there have paid groups now. <laughs> funny, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like. I know what I have to give, to offer to people. And I don't think that I commit myself to uh, that, right? Because then it doesn't become fun anymore. It doesn't become... Like, whoever whoever happens to be around listening to me and question me on certain things, like, uh, I'll give you my God's honest opinion about it. But if I don't know dick about it, I'm not going to speculate into that. I'll just tell you straight up. I don't know anything about that shit. I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> but... Yeah, on the, on the side. You, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, and then you just kind of garner that type of situation when you're talking to a bunch of people. And then they go, oh, well, I don't really have to, like, ask him a bunch of questions because if I just let him go, he'll teach me and tell me about all sorts of shit for hours. And then if somebody directs me onto a thing... I'll go into that hardcore too, in like deeper levels, not just like go 
buy the thing and just wait, right? Like go buy the thing and then look into this, 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 and this, right? Like and you're gonna want want to watch those types of things too, and then be careful. You know, you have all these opportunities other than just staking, right? You can become a market yeah. maker at this value, right? Like if you go see this much yeah. of a TBL, yeah. also check that too, right? Like see how many pairs are connected to that one asset, and then realize what the TBL actually really would be if you were to take all those other pairs away from the major ones that are connected together. Then you're just, there's your real pool of liquidity. Yeah, right? yeah. I'm like, well, what does yeah. that mean? And then I'll show you. I'll just fucking, I'll actually come over <laughs> here. Come here. And I'll show you what I'm, you know, I'll point my finger at the thing for you to see. <laughs> it, it, Nobody, it is nobody's going to do that for you. <laughs> yeah, it, it is interesting because, like, you're talking about liquidity and market makers, like, and we, uh, we were just talking about audience and influencers, and um, there's some, some similarities there because, like, you know, there's new blockchains that are coming out and stuff like that. Um, and, um, you know, they've, they've, they've launched, they've, they've just re readjusted what they're doing, maybe going to a new, uh, creating a new chain. And um, a lot of them are actually getting their market makers uh, sorted out before they actually launch. So, and then, and then approaching the centralized exchanges um, with two of the top money, money uh, market makers in the world. And those um, market makers control pools of individual people's funds and they're they're investing behind this 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 uh market maker in so, some in some circumstances um and they're just just traders and, and like they can put put money on uh, even a decentralized exchange or even a centralized like a buy bit and um be on the right side of the long or short and basically just have the money parked there and um and and, and basically earn, earn prop, um the the uh the, the exchanges fees, you know, with the leverage exchanges uh, particularly, like yeah. Bybit. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, uh, that that's another point. Um, basically, what, uh, what what we can also advertise um, to onboard. It's not necessarily only the the the, the big money making uh, systems or or like P two X, W. You know, it's not only about that. It's actually also when we're looking at uh, the big amounts that are going into Bitcoin or in, in uh, Ethereum, it's the same what we see uh, with gold. We see it right now. We have the more crisis we have on the uh, globe, on this rock, on this planet, the more people are looking uh, for for a safe haven, for a safe or for 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 a stable store of value. Right. Yeah. So, for example, um, P2X. Actually, we are we are uh, addressing two kind of uh, of people. Yes, the DJ who really wants to optimize his game to double as many a times as possible per year. You know, uh, on the way to fourteen thousand X, at least you can make a few. Or maybe you can make a twenty or thirty, forty X uh, in, in an overseeable time. No, um, I don't know. I, 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 well, I can get back to this math later <laughs> because yeah. I, had to, I had to do this earlier. But um, actually, I wanted to to call for everyone again because uh, to to um, apply for request speaker, um, we we actually don't want to have only a trilogy here. Uh, would be cool to to hear you guys because I know some of you are really really well experienced and have something to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, to recap where we started from, um, we're just basically catching up on all the, the news that happened during the week from your perspective. Uh, did anyone want to jump up and have a chat? Um, yeah, I do. Um, I'm just wondering why there are only three people up here um, actually speaking because I, I'm looking uh, at your uh, your topic and it's very, um, it's intuitive and it's in, um, apropos to our situation yep. and uh, I see a lot of people in the audience who are not coming up to speak and I'm wondering what is the gap um, can anyone address just that topic of just like what's the gap between uh, what is said to be any community um, yeah. um, humbly I just ask that question so if anyone would uh, just come up to uh, even have an opinion, or I don't even know what the topic of the room is specifically, but not to interrupt it, but respect. No, no. Thank you. Thank no, you. Yeah, right. yep. I agree. Yeah, nobody should be, be afraid to speak definitively on how they feel and what their opinions are about shit. I don't know what's happened the last week or two. Yeah. There's been yeah, a lot yeah. of stuff. 
or three months. Yeah, agreed. Three, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, uh, hopefully we're all uh, kind of on the same page, even if we don't agree with, you know, what we're doing. But, like, um, if there's any community, uh, I think there's efforts to, you know, uh, not define it, but um, express without, um, I don't know. That's my That's my two cents. So thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. So, um Coming back to the, the beginning, I was, it's basically, I, I kicked it off with sort of saying, um, I, I, I do avoid a lot of news during, during the week, and, and I, I try and stay out of getting into too, too deep info, um, uh, conversations with people, even though I have access uh, sometimes, um, and then I sort of reserve it for the weekend, and I just do this one this one space, and so I'm sort of That's selfishly... That's cool, because, like, you, I, honestly, you tend to, like, attract a certain kind of crowd and not enough of the others, and the others are not interested, but um, I appreciate you just opening up the space. Hopefully, it'll yeah. just, like, um, uh, have a greater reach, you know. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, yeah. No, it's actually, uh, I think, over 700 people uh, either watched live last week or or tuned in to, uh, to uh, play the, the replay. So so it's it's good. So um, some of these conversations we're having are sort of like uh, allowing people to come in and experience what we're talking about, so what, I, what our, our experiences are. Actually, um, Executioner, uh, or anyone else, um, uh, let, let's, uh, let's dive into a little bit what has happened in the last seven days. That, that's that's been noteworthy that that um, that you said a lot, a lot has happened this week. Um, let, let's get into some details and we'll go, maybe we can all throw to everyone and have a discussion about it. Sure. Um, so one thing that I've seen that a lot of the community's up in arms about is uh, Richard Hart's uh, deploying his his look on what he says the market has decided on for. Ethereum side hex and I think that whenever Richard Hart says anything in public that he takes it with great care and has specific intent behind what he's saying mm -hmm. um, because he knows that with his words that he can capture a massive amount of audience and influence them in some sort of way. So I think that his knowledge of that means that he has to be mindful on his public speaking. So what it makes me think has happened is something, something has happened that the public cannot be made aware of right now, either right now or ever. And that would be the reason why all of a sudden this change, this display. I don't know if it was a threat. I don't know if it was one of the higher up people, like a God Whale or a Rack and Ritual type of thing situation. And he said, no, -uh, I'm not having it. We're not doing that shit. I'm not exactly sure, but that's the only thing that makes sense. Because to sit there and actually say... But all we know is that he speaks to many people, so it's not just, like, one message. So, not to interrupt you, but, like, it's, like, yeah. a multi... Yeah. Yeah, there's multiple things behind what he's doing. But, ultimately, it doesn't matter whether he supports anything at all. Because the market, like you said, the market will decide whether they support it or not. Not, not. If Richard Hart doesn't support a specific thing, does not mean much, really. Because the rest of the market will just do what they have to do. Yeah. But it will influence a large majority of the market. And that's why I think that the intent behind what he says was mindful in some sort of respect. Do you think it was in response like, to something? something or? Maybe. I, I, something, there has been other things that have occurred in the past that wasn't made public that seemed really weird at the time. But then later on, we come to find out what had happened and went, oh, well, thank God that happened at the time. Right? Um, so somebody came in and bought so much Hex at a certain point in time that he held it captive and he could have just been selling down Hex forever. Mm. And so they bought the guy out with a bunch of Bitcoin. A bunch of Bitcoin. And got him out, mm -hmm. and it and it kind of saved the project at that moment in time, and that was within the first year. Yeah, 
So there's been, there, 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 I'm just saying that there's been other things that were wonky and weird like this, and nobody really knew what was going on. It all happened in the back scenes. All that major shit actually happened in the back scenes. And, of course, you know, depending on the situation, there may have to be a public response that, that maybe need to be made for whatever reason that may be there, which I don't know. I don't know exactly. Other than what the obvious would be, like Bro, this is sounding so cringe. Even you describing it, man. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I don't like it either. I don't. I don't like it either because I've I've been in hex and the whole ride the whole time, right? So yeah. I, I I a lot of people got hurt in that, and I don't appreciate like the if the intent was was to be just that specifically then congratulations because it didn't really do much if you just sat there and did nothing <laughs> honestly yeah. Yeah. if you freaked out and you did a bunch of shit you're probably worse off unfortunately yeah. so you yeah. shouldn't have done that right and it, maybe lessons need to be learned in that respect. Yeah. No, you should have paid attention and not listened to, like, this bullshit. Shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> well, we can be sort of respectful. Um, you know, I didn't I mean, realize that I was being disrespectful in any way. I was just saying my opinion. To the community, I hope everyone understands my respect for all of you. Yeah. You bitches. That's that's not really going to cut it on the space. Um, sorry, that's not the point. But if you can Look. hear through it and understand the context, maybe we can make some, you know, forward, okay. you know, momentum, and yeah, sure. have a, have a a positive space and share relative information that's actually important. Yeah, yeah. great. It will be actually be so rewarding. After all the time and effort and money we've invested in this, um, uh, if you want to call it a community, yeah, but sure, well, sure. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not. Can, 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 can I just, can, can I just stop, 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 stop for just a second? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't work for Richard Hart. I don't work for Pulse Chain. Executioner doesn't either. So we're not responsible for anyone else's choices. I don't mean to like. Yeah. Target so we're, this we're, we're particular we're not, space. We're not, like we're not, honestly, we're not, like this space, I appreciate. Yeah. No, 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 like I. No, 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 no I appreciate just, your space. I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll just say, I'll, I'll let you finish too, and I'll, I'll just, I'll just say this, that uh, I'll let you continue on, and uh, just keep it, just keep it respectful. So. It never was unrespectful. It, it was basically thank you for opening up the space. So don't mute me. Thank you. I appreciate it, and I appreciate yeah, yeah. your effort. And all of y'all who are even uh, waiting in the wings to be like, yeah, this is what we've been building. So it's like, don't fucking mute me, man. Don't even fucking oh, sure. start muting me, dickhead. You're you're fine, Art. It's fine. I mean, I think that the structure of the conversation was that there has been things that have happened in the last week, and we were there's a lot of things that have happened over the past fucking two years, man. Don't. But that wasn't the question. Me. That wasn't that That's wasn't the question at the time. The, the, the statement is, "Don't fucking mute me, you ass cunt." <laughs> yeah. So. so See ya. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> All right. Um, you can't just you can't again, speak to people again, like that. Um, you can you can have your opinion, but he wasn't even making a point. So, um, yeah, we don't need that. But exactly the, the the thing that we wanted to avoid is all this animosity. I would uh, I would really I would really try to get back uh, to the news and how we filter news and yeah to me please, please. whatever happened whatever happened with hex or with richard hart excuse me we know everyone has an opinion but i don't prioritize this topic yes it it for many people for holders and you know for affected people it is a topic i'm affected too but it doesn't matter because uh, in the long run, it will play out that way or that way. But what we can change is how we 
filter the news and the news for example are what Sparkswap uh, offers what uh, opportunities uh, we have with uh, with the infrastructure how uh, who is really working which individuals um, uh, are significant or who, who um, popped up this week with with good opinions who was not talking about Richard Hart but about uh, progress uh, because this, these are the things we can change and we can change um, by or we, we can um, bring volume to the chain therefore to our po uh, pockets and wallets by um, the measures we, 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 we undertake uh, by, by the things we do uh, excuse me, I'm a little bit slow right now <laughs> in my mind. I was traveling the whole night from Manila, coming back home here to the north. Um, yeah. It's 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock now in the morning. Anyway, so the, the news, I think, for, to me personally, whatever Richard Hart did, whatever he did or even not did, and what other people did, um, there are so many opinions that I think uh, we, we should um, not necessarily yeah. look for the things that divide us because everyone has a really clear opinion, you know, um, yeah. but what unifies us. And this is progressive work. It's a workshop. What happened yeah. with Tetra? What happened with the peer, uh, with the, uh, how many new protocols are interested to work with Tetra? Um, yeah. What is with Barista? What is with Liquid Loans? What is with... Um, you know, yes. with coming, uh, uh, you know, every influencer right now is building on a project. What yeah. is going on with them? Um, very interesting. Um, you got a bit. You got a, you got a point. I mean, like, uh, the, uh, like, and we touched we touched uh, on a on a uh, a pretty major major topic that was discussed during the week. And obviously, you know, people's uh, uh, emotions run high. But there's like, you, you can you can have a difference of opinion. And uh, I'll keep I'll keep on doing these spaces, and we'll have them. Uh, but you know, just 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 be just be respectful. Don't say, "Oh, thank you for the space," and then go and insult so someone else that's that's, that's speaking. Um, like you just straight away, <laughs> see you later. You'll never yeah. be back. I, yeah. I haven't. I'm not offended, by the way. I, I don't. Yeah. I think I know who that is. I think it's Josh Soul. I think he yeah. has, he needs to handle yeah. this shit on his own behalf. However, uh. I haven't heard an indifference of opinion, so yes, I opposed to what I said in the first place, and I think that it's relevant to people just not get fucking scared about shit and do dumb shit all of a sudden when you've been setting yourself for the path to do what you set out to do from the very get go when you put your money into the thing and, and pull the lever yeah. on the shit, you know, like don't get scared all of a sudden. I mean, just pay, just be careful and don't make quick moves even when big giant influencers make make comments about things like don't let that shake your tree like because yeah. that's what the point is that's what the whole yeah. point is so 100%. like yeah that's all i'm trying to say here and if you have an indifference yeah. opinion on those types of things and think that the market's going to go any other different way other than every single time it does the same thing every cycle then let's talk about it you know like that's yeah. i want to shake this tree in this room and maybe someone will come up and talk yeah and and like we could have that type of conversation too i mean let's not be fucking scared about this shit we're invested this is yeah. what we give a fuck about. Like, I have emotional attachment to certain assets because I love them, right? And so yeah. I'm going to, and that's the way it is. And I also have attachments with other people in the community that I've been here for years and years and years with. And then I'm willing to do, like, a lot of the shit that I've learned to go build and develop things and then reward them for participating with the shit that I'm doing. Yeah. Right? And oh, it's yeah. really simple. And then I can deploy tactics and strategies and do things, and I don't have to educate a bunch of people. It'd be like, look, I'll do all the fucking work, even. <laughs> you guys just participate in the thing, and you don't have to expect anything from me. But yeah. maybe by your participation and me being who I am, I'll reward you for such behavior. Yeah. Right? Like, it's, it's simple. Sorry. Go ahead, guys. Go ahead, man. Ocelot's just got cheaper, Matt. Ooh. Yeah, pulse went down uh, below the uh, point zero 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 one three, which I think is a defending area, from what I'd heard. You know, the little chirping birds, right? And so we broke beneath that. 
we'll see what happens, right? <laughs> the RSI still got a little room, so we'll see. But yeah, yeah, you can go get yourself, go mint yourself an ocelot and find out what we're talking about, you know. And also, uh, you could get to the rooms where I'm going to be at if you, anybody's interested in actually hearing anything I have to say. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Tell, tell, tell us where, where, where we can get in those rooms. Tell us where we can get some more uh, access to your seven-hour streams. <laughs> it doesn't have to be like that. <laughs> it doesn't have to be like that. But Man, I, I'll, 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 some it. Some people like they tell. Right? Like, fuck that. Yeah, well, while, while your time is still free, tell us where yeah. we can find those rooms. <laughs> Ocelots Crypto is the t.me for your uh, telegram. That's t.me. Uh, forward slash ocelots crypto and yeah. well, there's more information at uh, ocelots dot win for yeah. what we've got going on uh, and then we also have another layer that we're building that happens to be in a cooperative effort between me and red squirrel and crypto sloth who all have nft uh, elements and we are going to deploy a protocol that's kind of like a cool little 404 type of deal. It's not the 404. It's all actually audited ERC-721 uh, contracts. But in this protocol, you'll be able to actually put in an NFT and get ERC-20s, 555 ERC-20s out, out the other end, or vice versa. Put in 555 of said ERC-20, whether it's an ocelot, a sloth, or a squirrel ERC-20, into the contract and then get the, uh, the NFT. Now, the NFTs themselves, individually, just by holding them, comes with their own benefits, regardless of the Trinity contract that we're building but the trinity contract kind of adds like a a cool little dynamic that nfts don't have um that open an arbitrage yeah. opportunity for people so like right now I'll, I'll give an example like right now the ocelot nft is not minted out right mm -hmm. and if we were to decide to deploy trinity which i'm not giving anybody timelines on that type of thing as far as right now Hell, we could probably just deploy it tomorrow if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would know that the ocelots aren't completely minted out unless this this uh, room that we're in right now becomes greatly successful and everybody just goes there and just mints them out, which, I don't know, that'd be great. But mm -hmm. if they're not, then it presents this opportunity. Because then what I could do with the, the ERC-20s is I could provide liquidity and I don't know, what if I set the liquidity for the for the Ocelot NFT uh, ERC-20s at 2 million pulse for 555? Yep. And then now I set the arbitrage. You know how many people are going to start dumping their NFTs into the contract to get 555? tokens so they yep. can get to the impulse out so they can actually so they can go take a million of it and go mint another nft so they can go put it into the contract you know quickly that mint okay. is going to mint out when that happens if i were to do such said things it's now let's just say that i happen to be like really really knowledgeable about liquidity and how markets work and how price is derived and how protocols work and to be able to look at any protocol and be able to see the functions and understand how those things work at a deeper level than people that go to a telegram or go to their website and go see how things actually work themselves. Mm -hmm. And then we've got a cool little thing called Stratus that's coming out through the Tetra tools on their protocols that we'll be able to mm. expose certain functions with certain things. And then, I don't know, maybe create front ends mm -hmm. that, that, I'm telling you guys, we've got development possibilities and opportunities on a roadmap that y'all don't see yet. You don't see it yet, but it's coming. It is coming. And I will, I'm proud to say, if Stu was in here, he would admit it too. The founder of, Tetra, of the Tetra Tools is that uh, me and True DeFi with me and Sloth and Squirrel, with the Trinity contract, and just our NFTs that are that are indirectly connected to the Stratus protocol in the very first place, it's in the code. If you go look at my code, you'll see that it's even in there. I wrote it. Mm -hmm. So, well, 
And then True DeFi also is another protocol that's going to be launching on these tools as well. And that's not it. Like, there's more development, more things that are coming that you guys aren't aware of on top of it. And we're going to be there to educate you guys the easiest fucking way possible. We're going to develop tools and have things. And it's going to be, if you want to learn about this specific thing, then you'll be able to go there and learn about those specific things without a lot of fuss, a lot of muss, no, no other opinions and other things to distract you. Just you go there and you make your own fucking decisions for what you want to get done done yep. and then yep. you will have the tools that you need that when you want to go tell somebody else about this cool shit that you got that you educated yourself on you can help them too with these easy tools to just show them the way and all these types of things when tetra so, launches it's going to be a whole new game so but so basically that the, the most basic stuff we will we'll hopefully have to teach someone is just ge just in general conversations but also just just wallets and all that basic stuff and how to how to get into pulse chain and there's going to be a whole whole suite of these extra tools and strategies um, that are going to be, you would say, pre-done pre um, um, and different choices people can make uh, that don't have a lot of a lot of experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, let's say like a Git book that has like an artificial intelligence that when you go up to a search bar and you just type in any old shit about blockchain stuff that you want to learn about, then it directs you to the right stuff on that page to where to go look at that stuff. And it and it incrementally breaks it down in a, way, in a way that if you come to a guy like me with a question, like I didn't understand this thing that gets a little technical on the page, believe me, I can break it down for you. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, for awesome. sure. So this, this is actually what we need, right? We need uh, the competence uh, of, of people. And uh, I mean, everyone or most people know Hexecutioner. Uh, he has a very good uh, or excellent reputation. And uh, there are many of us uh, in contact for many years already, more or less, but we know each other. We, we, we observe each other. We, we, you know, our ways uh, uh, cross. Um, and so we, we, we know who we are talking with today. This is actually where we are actually the, the, the new generation of um, founders. Um, the, we, we are not new to the chain. We are not new um, to, the, to the community. Basically, we have uh, paid our due and, 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 and our right of passage by doing our mistakes by by learning from it and have proven over and over to to act responsibly and this yeah. is actually what uh, is the is the fundament um what why we approach the market nowadays and why we are also accepted by the market and by 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 the the older founders likes yeah. to not older but but um you know uh, yeah, other you know other on the older other <laughs> other, other founders who are founders for a longer time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. They, they, they call Stu old. He'll, he'll, he'll have words with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so it's recorded now. Uh, anyway, right. no, I'm older. Um, so, so the point is, um, so we are, we are actually chasing, um, so we are actually supporting each other. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. all the protocols right now, for example, Hexecutioner's protocol or Kool-Aid and Kinetic's uh, protocol. So there are, there are, without even looking in detail at the tokenomics, we support each other because we know the colors of each other. And that's why we also, yeah. you know, support each other and um, involve. Um, so, and one of one program can always make use also of the other program it's yeah you know yeah. There, there are always mutual benefits and it's easy to find a, a partnership nowadays uh, because we know already we, we, we have a foreseeable a pond that we are swimming in together yeah. so actually um it's an it's a very safe environment for for the audience and, and, and for for the participants so yeah. we actually pretty much are able to clean the market from from scams because we can outperform them we are there we have a high sympathy level in, in our chats you know yeah. we have quality content and you know when it comes to for example profit pure profits um you know as neil um 
started to making this um, a separation between inflationary yield, where you always need a, another onboard to pump the token price, or service yield, where actually a protocol offers a certain service and uh, these develops re develops yeah. revenues. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Dhex, I can see your hand up. I'll, I'll, I'll get to you next. Yeah. So that was actually uh, what, what I wanted to come up with, and um, I made a calculation today because uh, Shilam Defoe, that's my last point uh, for now, Shilam Defoe was uh, giving a comment in a, in, in a live stream with Lit today, and it was actually, uh, it, the meaning was rather funny, okay, but um, I was thinking. So he said as a comment, hey, a 2x is pretty close to a 14,000 x, right, guys? <laughs> guys! <laughs> so I thought, man, it sounds funny, but let's see what, what for example, when we're talking about P2x, what would happen? P2x are the protocol 2x's, okay? That, that it's not an if, it is a given. So, especially for people who are uh, joining during the first few weeks or days. Uh, we have the possibility, for example, during the first year to four-ish. I don't, I don't make real predictions, but there's a good chance between four and five times uh, to make a two X. You, you know what you two X. You can get cycle you two, you two X multiple times, not just once during the year. But even if you did, like you know, that's two X in one year. I'm, I'm talking about the people who start really in the first day. Okay, first day, yeah. second day, yeah, third yeah. day. Uh, about those people, they have a chance maybe to get to, to a five times or to a four times. Otherwise, I wouldn't take my mouth that full. But yeah, yeah. the point I want to make is double a 2x, you come up with a 4x, double a 4x, you have an 8x, double yeah. the 8x, and you have a 16 freaking x, and then post token itself might do a 2x or a 3x. Where yeah, do you yeah. end up by then? Suddenly you have a 64 or 100 eggs. Yeah, the numbers are big. And this is why we, for example, on TrueDefi or even on uh, P2X, why we recommend other protocols. Hey, use the pulse you earn here and go there. Please play with them. Yeah. Make use of the infrastructure that is there and all the, 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 the creativity that is produced here. Cool. Uh, D D Hex, go ahead, mate. Uh, you had your hand up. Um, uh, you know, jump in. I'm wondering if you can hear me because I've got a fan on. It's getting pretty warm over here. But um, I, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, you've got people like um, Sean in the crowd and he's a HOA guy. But, like, I know that these guys are really creative. They, they make a lot of cool shit. Um, and, you know, there's a potential there, you know, not only, like, you know, ocelots and things like that happening with NFTs, these guys can build their own um, strategies um, and attach them to their own uh, NFT market, which I think yeah. is going to be really cool. Like for their community, um, like they might have a pool strategy where they go and add their own tokens or something like that or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but there, there's a lot of innovation that can happen um, in the marketplace, and I think that's going to help Pulse Chain a lot in terms of... Um, visibility to the outside um i'm looking yeah. forward to the automation only because like you think about it, a lot of these uh other chains tend to automate uh or get bots doing a lot of stuff now we've got bots ourselves on on chain but yeah. if you know, even if 20 uh 20 percent of the chain automated um it's actual money and volume moving through the chain but yeah, it's definitely going to perk up attention, um, and people are going to take notice. Yeah, well, in traditional markets, a lot of the volume is, is all bots, you know. So there should be no no surprise that it's going to be very similar, um, whether it's done by arbitrage bots or uh, uh, people setting up their own personal strategies. Um, it's it's going to be automated bots, which is closely related, really, <laughs> when you think about it. Yeah, and there's loads of different things that you can do with it. So um, whether it's LP management, that kind of thing, um, like, you know, V3 liquidity, that type. Um, yeah, so I imagine that there's going to be some pretty cool stuff created by, you know, a large swath of uh, the community. And I, I, um, 
I'm looking forward to it, man. Like, I, I want the tools out there. I know that um, we're still we're still in beta for Omnis, but we're, we're we're kicking goals behind the scenes. We're making a lot of progress. So, um, yeah, I think in the next two three weeks, you're going to see, yeah, you're going to see some pretty cool upgrades. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, def- definitely, and it, it just it just takes t- time to come, and also it, it's got to be a hundred percent right before it comes out. So we're, we're looking forward to that, hundred uh, um, percent. Executioner, um, I was going to ask you, I'm curious, um, what are your what are your thoughts on uh, on on V three uh, liquidity on on Pulse Chain, um, with with respect to range optimization? I think that. It, it is purported that it's like 50 to 80,000 percent more profitable if you know what you're doing. It's mm-hmm. also 50 to 80,000 percent more destructive if you don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll end up with a whole bag of one thing and not the other. <laughs> is that yeah. what you mean? Yeah. yeah. Yep. 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 So you got to learn uh, multiple deployments of V3 across multiple ranges. You got to learn how to make multiple ranges and then cross section them over each other as well. You got to know where you, you gotta, if you have enough assets to do V3, you got to understand that V3 is a tool. V3 is a tool for big players to do exactly what I was just expressing. So right. I was going to ask you the question, would it be better with an automation and providing mm-hmm. your, your own liquidity for your own, your, your own, um, own range that you set? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Uh, if, okay, so let's say from Jump Street, everybody knows that early is good, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you happen to be one of the early people who get a majority of the asset, like you go look at the holders list and you know that you are, right? So you can kind of break down from that holders list the percentages yeah. in which you find is play money. And with that uh-huh. play, with that play money, it's really like, support the community money really so what you do with that percentage first and foremost more than likely is it's like the set that you go put in v2 across from zero infinite absolute 18 zeros after the decimal Mm -hmm. to infinity and it's like your floor right of liquidity that'll always be there you're never going to look at that again yeah it's probably going to garner fees but you don't really give a shit yeah, yeah. Right. And then within that, you can play V3 on top of it and then set certain ranges across the liquidity that's already there to thicken it up in certain spots, to cause volatility in certain ranges, to cause for you to be able to buy in at a bigger at a bigger value without moving the price against yourself and yeah. vice versa on the other way. But a good part of the, the education with doing those types of moves is knowing in the market cycle in which to make those types of moves. Unless what you're trying to do is manipulate the market. If you want to just do it to make good moves, then you need to do like your DCA, right? So you DCA yeah. in to the market while everyone's losing their ass. Right during the yeah. bear market, when everything's going down, you already have your money. Yeah. The, let's let's just say that it was a, a circumstance that you got lucky and you were at the top or the bottom of the cycle when you got in, and this is how you'd start, right? If the if you were at the top, which well, okay, yeah. let's just say the bottom. Let's just say the bottom because that's the most recent for everybody. Yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. Now what you're going to be doing is DCAing your way back out, but nobody that is new is going to be having this type of strategy because they don't have the assets to be DCAing out. Why the hell would they do that? They're trying to invest. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You don't. Obviously, this conversation is for certain specific individuals and not the whole yeah, blanket yeah. of people. But for the blanket of the blanket of people, would be the bottom of the market is the best time to actually establish your setting a foot point for having assets in the first place. Right. For the rise yeah. of the incoming market of this this said bull. Right. Yeah. That is the thing that you're going to watch. You're going to want to watch sentiment. And if you want to see what sentiment is, then don't look at daily candles. Look at like weekly. Or, or monthly even, right? Yeah. Pay attention yeah, yeah. to those li- liquidity pools that have money in them and see if there's a Twitter bot or there's something that a community already has and then attach that to something that, that you monitor or some shit like this that you put your money into and mm-hmm. then just strike when that when that is good, right? If you see there's a lot of quid- liquidity and you're not a market maker, you're just a speculator or some shit and you see like uh, uh, like a good, a good indicator, 
I would say, which is not, it's not uh, predetermined to be the 100% golden ticket here, okay? Yeah. But the RSI, the Relative Strength Index indicator, yeah. is, is a good one. It's a really good one to watch as far as seeing what the strength of the market is going is doing in, in, in and of itself. If you're actually looking at the right pairs, right? Like, look at the yeah, pair yeah, that yeah, has yeah, the yeah. majority of liquidity and then break down the charts that you're looking at, whether it would be at a one hour, a four hour, a daily, a weekly, or whatever. And then you can judge your sentiment, right? Yeah. And you don't have to listen to the crowd because generally the crowd, the people who are doing a lot of the commentary, aren't really the biggest players, Generally, no, unless, unless they are the influencers, which may not necessarily be the best thing. But, <laughs> well, because most people that have a lot of money, they don't really come out into public and, and say anything. They don't talk about it, exactly. Right. Yeah. And, and, and also, like, the, the large speculators show up in the, in the TVL and the volume. That's, mm-hmm. if, you're looking, if you're listening to that, um, then, then you've probably got a, a, a closer finger on, on the pulse of what's happening. It's a department part. Yeah. Yeah, it's like when somebody says, "Oh, what? What do you think? What do you think I should get into?" I'm like, "Well, what fancies your interest? What like actually makes your ears perk?" Because I'm not going to tell you shit. First of all, right? So you make that decision, and then I will help you with. I've got to go look at the liquidity. I got to go see where they mar- where their market is, where their dexes are, what this is, what that. Is, what, you know, well, who's making what moves? Give me one day. And then I'll come back with a better definitive understanding as to whether I would actually put money in it or not. And then you still make your own fucking decision. But you're the one that asked. Yeah. That's the only reason why I would do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I'm not wasting a lot of my time. But yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes even I have to update my worldview. Right. And I'm yeah, willing to yeah. listen to other people, too. So it goes both ways in a lot of a lot of respects. That's why a lot of us still talk to each other after years to know each other. <laughs> That type, these types of conversations aren't usually in this public setting where people can just come into the Twitter thing and listen to us fucking talk. We don't really yeah. expose ourselves like this very often, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. No, thanks, yeah. thanks for ke- ke- keeping it real. Um, but um, oh, uh, the reason I was asking you, obviously, yeah, so, so v- V3 uh, liquidity on Pulse Chain, like, uh, wh- where, where can people find it? Like, basically, you got uh, 9mm? I think that's it. I that's mean, it, yeah. I, know that, I know that Alex deployed one, uh, Alex from Hedron deployed one day one, day one of Pulse Chain deployment because we all knew that a lot of us that are in Hedron and Hex and Icosa are market makers. Like a lot of yeah. us already know each other. So we wanted to make sure that in no way was there anything going to stop anybody, even even though the, some of us already know how to go to the back ends and, and make yeah, yeah. how to point it at 369 ID yeah. and make it do what it needs to do. But for everybody, that they could actually get a hold of their liquidity after it got copied to the other side because everybody else was already was being literally told to take your money out of out of these contracts and things like this and yeah. hold on to it for the copy. And nobody knew when the hell that was actually going to happen or whether whether there was an announcement that was going to happen or anything like this. And yeah, the rest yeah. of, you know, I guess the people that were closer to us were like, don't worry. Like, if you really want to know how to do all that stuff, like, we'll teach you. We'll show you how to do it. Like, nothing gets stuck on the blockchain, bro. Like, you either yeah, really yeah. give it up and make a mistake or there's somewhere to recover this type of thing, right? Like, it's not that t- difficult to figure out. It's like you've written, you've written down C phrase. It's like I, I've, you know, you get someone that's panicked, uh, calling you in a panic. It's it's like, have you got your written down C phrase? Okay, don't worry. We can we can we can reset and start again. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then most people don't even know that even when it comes to security, like seed phrases, that there's actually a predetermined set of words. So you could even start there if you forgot, right? Or yeah, you know, it, it sucks, but yeah, sometimes the money in there is worth it. I've had to yeah. have people. All sorts of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and Richard uh, tweeted about that. There's uh, like for people th- that thought they were doing randomized uh, C words uh, on, a, on a randomizer. It's like he's, he came out with a tweet and said, no, 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 no. They're pretty much, <laughs> they're yeah. pretty, yeah, they can be pretty consistent. But I wouldn't use that. Yeah, it's just a it's just a list that doesn't change. I mean, I mean, it may it may in some sort of way, but it's still a list. Like you can get a hold of the damn list and see what all the words are. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Try different combinations. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Some some people are going to try. Right. Uh, there was a there was a uh, a puzzle that got put onto Twitter 
I don't know, months ago, where it was uh, a picture. And in the picture itself correlated the 12 words of the seed phrase in it. And if you were able oh. to figure it out, then you would get the money that's inside the wallet. <laughs> but the combinations were in the millions of what, because ah. even if you were to figure out the 12 words, you still don't know the actual order in which they go in. So, yeah, the picture wasn't in any way going to tell you that much. So they already, I mean, it was a fun game. That to, to, It was really creative, in, in my opinion, on what they did and caused for engagement. I'm sure a lot of people tried. Yeah. Uh, but the, for those of us that are, like, on the know of the knowledge on how it all actually works at the start before it trickles down to whoever said the fuck, whatever they said about it, that may or yeah. may not have been true. Like, in no way. Like, literally, the odds are, like, your chances of getting struck by lightning is higher than you guessing that. Like, the chances of you just going through and putting any words in there that are on the list and then actually unlocking somebody's wallet that has some money in it is even more astronomically absurd. Which is crazy. So, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, laugh I'm laughing at something else. Um, I, I've got a... I've, I, I, can, I can probably say... Um, uh, nothing, nothing bad. Uh, like uh, in my in my Telegram group, I've got I've I've got to this sort of uh, weird sense of humour where I got this uh, gif, um, and it's it's a, it's of a guy standing in a desert with a with a with literally a a, a rocket with a, a fuse that's lit <laughs> strapped to his back, and it's just in a loop. So it looks like it's like the fuse is burning, and 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 like above it, I'll go. It's every now and again, I'll just like go, how do you keep an idiot in suspense? And I'll post that gif. And like no one's not, no one's honest enough to go. Ah, you bastard! You got me or anything like that. But I, but <laughs> people are still sit there watching it, waiting for the guy to take off or do something, and nothing ever happens. It's like they look up and they say, they "Say my words." How to keep an idiot in suspense? <laughs> oh, jeez. That just makes me think of all the other videos that I've sat there and watched, like the tumbling truck down the fucking the cliff or the test dummy one where the big truck is like flying a hundred miles an hour at the wall, but it never hits the wall <laughs> yeah, yeah. It 10 times before you're like, wait a minute. Hold on. Or, or, uh, <laughs> or the one that is like stares quite closely at this white dot in the middle of the screen. And then, <laughs> then this cloud comes up and goes, ah, through your speakers. Yeah. Uh, Oh, I don't know how we got talking about that, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Oh, oh we were talking about uh, v V3 liquidity. Uh, the, re the reason I brought, brought that up was um, there's so many people on the ETH side and Ar Arbitrum and all the L2s that, um, I mean, there's a lot of YouTube channels that are, that are, that are following, um, you, know, you know, setting your ranges and stuff like that for, for li li liquidity farming. Wait, wait, you um, said they're setting their ranges? Did you say that they're posting what their ranges are? Yeah, I mean, I mean, what I, I've seen, I've seen videos where they're they're basically adjusting their ranges, and so they're doxing and, themselves. Yeah, yeah, uh, but they're on they're on Ethereum and they're on you know uh, massive changes. And they they obviously don't think they're affected. Wow, like you could totally take advantage of that. You know that, I right? Mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they've got a ten grand you know liquidity position or something like that. But they've got them all over the place, you know, Camelot here, there, there, there or, you know, it's all these different places. But uh, but they're, they're so popular, they're garnering a lot of uh, uh, viewers, and those those channels seem to be growing on, on YouTube. Uh, that that's what I was curious about. Um, is there anyone on YouTube that's that, that's actually getting a, a little bit into that area with they V3? Should, they should not. They should, they should not post it. Yeah. No. No. That's that's bad. They should stop doxing themselves in their wallets on oh, the doxing part. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. That's dumb. Like no. Uh. Uh. Like when I when I educate people, I go make entire things to show people like the like actual time. screenshots and stuff, and like all yeah. like put text on there to make whatever I'm showing relevant for what's what I, what is actually. Uh, and not volatile and yeah. so like if you did have a significant amount of v3 liquid uh, like that was dominating a certain asset and let's say said asset was on um some leverage platform right yeah yes yeah. if i was literally able to go in there and see 
where the volatility starts and stops, then I would have my stop losses on every fucking one already known ahead of time. Yeah. Right. So I, w- I wouldn't even have to have a stop loss. I wouldn't because I would already know where the price is going to stop going up at. And I would also know where it's going to stop going down at because there's no more fucking assets to be sold or bought at those levels anyway. Like it's yeah, yeah. so ridiculous to be able to just go see it in the first place. But then when somebody goes and shows you their range, like where they're actually at in all yeah. that, what I can do is I can go see the entire pool. Like if there's 50 people in there, it doesn't show me like each 50 individuals, but I, I there yeah. are tools where you can go check, take the wallet and go look at where just that person is specifically yeah. inside that pool. So that way you can choose whether you want to sit on top of somebody or not and make yeah. that particular price range more thick for whatever reason that may be. Because you yeah. know that like, especially like if, if all the liquidity is trapped between let's say a penny and five cents, right? And there's millions of dollars between a penny and five cents, but there's zero dollars below a penny and below and above five cents. Then I'm going to make, make my bet between a penny and five cents, the whole range, right? Knowing that it is never going to go above five cents. And I'm going to be watching liquidity the whole time. And if anyone starts stacking liquidity above five cents, then I know that it's just becoming less volatile. That means that people are going to need less money to push it up there but yeah. less money to drop it back down into the thick part again, where it actually yeah. the price gets captured as if you're watching the dot move out into the air from the top of the pool and then back into the pool again, how it doesn't want to move anymore. That's why yeah. they call it like liquidity itself. It's all, you can almost make it molasses with yeah. these three, and then you can remove your own liquidity in certain ranges and cause for volatility to be there at that price point. Right, so you can trap other liquidity providers by doing those types of things if you're a big enough player, and if 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 your goal was to take your asset and shoot the price to the moon, well, you can't really make any forward statements of that type of behavior to even the liquidity providers, but you end up trapping them below the price because your intention was to provide all. Yeah, they were providing liquidity on top of you, but what they didn't realize yeah. is they were putting they were all little birds on a big whale. And then the whale decided to move over here, but went underwater first, and all the birdies had to fly away. Well, the birdies yeah. flew away, but they didn't take their food with them, because it was yeah. sitting on top of the whale. Now they just yeah. left sitting there with whatever they could hold in their mouth. Now they got to go yeah. find the whale again and go set back down on him, and then hope he doesn't move again after they collected all the food. Well, right? And the same thing with moving your liquidity with the price. When the yeah. whale decides to move the liqui- move the price himself, and he's the one providing liquidity, well, all of a sudden, where the price was, there's no more liquidity there because he moved it up. Now everyone else that had small little scraps down below, now they're stuck on one side. They have to make a decision: Do I leave that shit there just in case he decides that he want that the price needs to come back down for whatever reason? Yeah. Like, is it going to keep playing in a wider range than what I think it is? Like, there's some a little bit of speculation that goes there, but you could see it in the liquidity as it's being added. Like, yeah, my fucker's going to move all of a sudden because now he's facilitating his, his price points to do those things, right? And then, so yeah, you got to play that game, right? Who cares what the influencers are saying? The influencers don't know this. Like, if influencers <laughs> knew all this, they would have a totally different method on how they were handling all the stuff they were. And they wouldn't yeah. be talking about it in public. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you might be thinking something else, too. If someone was showing a screenshot of what they were doing, even if you knew the, si- the size of their their um their LP, um you can probably find out which wallet they they are as a, as a holder on chain, and then you can follow them around everywhere. Yeah, people can follow you around everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can work well, it out. Look at uh, they got uh, tools now that track wallets and shit. That you know, yeah. You could just counter trade. Tetra comes out. You could make a strategy that counter trades all those wallets that you've been watching and shit like this. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, anybody else that's participating in those types of things can enjoy the benefits of your work and not even yeah. understand what the hell it is that they're doing when they put a hundred dollars <laughs> in and it makes money. And you're just they're just like, well, this is neat. And you're like, yeah, this is way better than me t- teaching you for years, like I had to do with myself. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've, 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 found, I've, I've found that too. I'm, I'm, I'm generally having more conversations about, all right, I'll set it up for you <laughs> or whatever, you know, like I do like a lot, lot of long term, uh, like I, I play in the monthly charts and I'm doing a lot of, with a lot of blue chips, but, uh, I, you know, I'll do it on Binance chain or I'm trying to get it, everything over to Pulse chain. Um, 
there's all my slippages that are okay. Um, but I must admit, I, I do I do a little bit on on, on Binance chain still. But Ethereum's a shit. Like I, I can't I can't deal with that those gas fees. It's just it's just terrible. No. Dude, like uh, last market cycle, my buddies and I were spending a quite a bit of money to learn and educate about the V3 liquidity back when it was first brand new, right? Yeah. You just, just launched the thing. And we, we were kind of in awe with it, right? Like, this is fantastic. Like, this is so complicated. People aren't going to get this shit. And we understood it to a T, right? We really yeah. got what was going on there. But in the, the learning and testing of of the volatility and how to manipulate and, and hold markets in certain respects. Mm -hmm. I, I think that we took screenshots of like fees of up to four grand just to remove or add liquidity, which happens to be one of the more expensive things you can do, right? Like sending from wallet to wallet is particularly yeah. cheap. Adding liquidity is really should only be like a couple bucks, but four grand, yeah. my guy, like these, like some of these guys got That's some right. money. Right, like if they were to accidentally click the button, it would have went through for four grand. Like they had the money to pay for the fucking yeah. shit. They just, they were just laughing. Like, like even they didn't <laughs> want to move their own assets around because they're like, "Fuck that!" <laughs> that was all my fees for the fucking day or two or whatever the hell. You know what I mean? Like, fuck that. No, yeah, I'm yeah. Not paying them for that, and so it made me think of like a lot of the stuff that's been said recently about the Ethereum costs for what people are paying to miners and things like this and it's like yeah the it's not the small guy that are that's paying those absorbent fees it's not because they just yeah. choose not to do it yeah yeah and the gas is getting bit up yeah yeah there's, there's people out there with big bags that are happy to to pay a hundred dollars sorry not five hundred dollars four hundred dollars for a, a transaction now you know, it's like it's like it's like uh, Uber Eats. Do you want priority delivery, or do you do you, do you want uh, standard delivery? And they're going to stop at, at another place before they get your food to you. Yeah, there's some people yeah. that I, I want priority, and I'm happy to pay for it because they want the money. Yeah, nobody so, wants to stroke the miners. I mean, because you—that's what they're doing. They're just stroking the miners. Yeah, yeah. Same thing on every network, though, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. I always hit aggressive. Even on slow times, I hit aggressive. Yeah. I do so. <laughs> uh, anybody... you don't hit aggressive, you think that you're going to be sitting there pending for fucking ever, you know? Well, yeah, and it happens when, when you least want it to as well. Like, you're just trying to get something done and duck out the door or, or something, and, and you know... I just come kind of up to my com my computer and I just go bang 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 bang. I know I know exactly what I wanted to get done. I get it done and I basically want to walk away. So, so yeah. Well, so that's a good telltale sign. Also, silver. When that happens, the first thing that comes to even my mind is what happened. Like I've got to go look now. Something happened. Something's going on with the network, and yeah. I'll just go through all the telegrams and like see what the community is saying. Like if they're having troubles with because they always think it's the protocol, right? So I always hear the founders like, oh, fuck, something's going on, right? So then I'll yeah. go through and I'll go check Pulse Chain's health and see, like, what's really going on with that. And then I'll just go let yeah. the founders know, like, it's not you, it's the it's the network, da da da, da like, whatever's going on. And then everybody's back to normal again. Only, I guess, in the chats that I give a shit about, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. So, is there is there anything else that um, that we we want to just uh, uh, bring up now? Um, but we'll probably round out the space pretty soon. Uh, anything else? Uh, we've got started on talking one one topic from happen what, what happened during the week. Um, is there anything else that um, is is probably noteworthy that should be discussed, or uh, you can educate me on that happened during the week? Well, nice meeting you guys. Well. That's it from my end. Uh, I'm gonna have a nap soon. Um, oh yeah, you've had a long night. Yeah, take, yeah. take take care, mate. Well, thank, thanks for coming on. Thanks uh, for having me, and um, yeah, always nice to meet you too, uh, Executioner, and uh, everyone else. Take care. Have a great week. See you, Daniel. You too. Bye. Good talking thank to you. you. So yeah, uh, yeah. So execution. Is there anything else that um, we could probably go into, but, but you want to squeeze in before we sort of round out the the space? Um, any gossip? Uh, oh boy, 
Any more um, nerves you wanna you wanna you wanna <laughs> <laughs> strike a nerve with the few folks that are in here? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, no, I mean, there's been some some good things. I think I, I think that the uh, the earn protocol is doing pretty well, right? They they established themselves last week. I think that they're doing all right in comparison to another protocol that was that was kind of similar to them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that they're they're Congratulations to them. I mean, that's good. Yeah. Uh, I, I do like this. You guys put me on a spin here tonight, and I really appreciate it a little yeah. bit because, uh, especially with, with True DeFi, uh, at the very beginning, making the comment about reaching out to other networks and gaining value there and yeah. extracting it from there and bringing it back into here. And I know that he was bringing up uh, you know, commentary from other things and, yeah. you know, compounding that into here, which is great. And I think that I, I, that's, what, that's what I want. Add that. Yeah. I'm going to add that to my repertoire because that's brilliant. I mean, cause I, I really honestly do believe that the best onboarding route for in and out is not going through Ethereum. And we do need to start. I, I don't have any, of I, I don't have any actual affiliation with a lot of the protocols that are out there other than what we're all, like a lot of good friends we don't have any like deals with each other or any shit like this so that's really nice that we can operate in this type of way um and oh, i don't know i mean we really need to just give time on a lot of this stuff to just let it get developed and let it get deployed and in the meantime we need to establish like what you guys kind of set for the precedence tonight on uh onboarding is really good and where we establish those onboards from, um, it, it would like what DeFi, True DeFi said earlier about uh, getting people who are fresh, new off of the train to start with the wallets. It's that's a slow road to going to yeah. communities where they already have that understanding of what to do, and all you really need to do is give them the RPC settings. Yeah. then you're going to capture a lot more people with the types of conversations that we're bringing to the table about these types of things. And I think that we could probably yeah. try to expose ourselves in those communities, us, the guys yeah. that are here yeah. now, right? I mean, we could make an effort to do those types of things and bring more people to Pulse Chain without them really kind of knowing that that's what we're doing. Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Especially in a group of us doing it, uh, we'll have a bigger impact, right? Because they'll be like, where the fuck did these guys come from? So yeah, that's all, all, all the people, all the people I, I can see uh, that are onboarding really, really fast. Like uh, uh, L2s, like like Blast that, that have been hitting the news. Uh, recent ones have been, you know, uh, Base Arbitrum, Solana, Solana's going nuts, and they all seem to have those chains. Those blockchains seem to have uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, airdrop incentives and stuff like that, and that and that's ca that's gra grabbing everyone's attention um, and bringing them in. But the good news is they're, they're all having to get EVM wallets and they're having to learn all that stuff themselves. So I think um, I think uh, if anyone is hanging around in any of those communities or, or have friends or, or, or relationships there, that um, th that's a really good th uh, thread to pull on. Because you're you bringing in people that already know how to use their, their MetaMask or their Rabbi wallet. Um, that's, a, that's a good point. Yeah, but as far as like other news, um, dra dramatic news, like I don't, I try to, I try to keep that out of the public realm as far as like, I'll give my opinion on some of the stuff on the drama, but usually what I'm bringing to the table is like neutrality of of a situation, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll give you my opinion, but I don't want to make any <laughs> any direct statements about nothing on anything, that even if I knew or didn't know. You know what I mean? Like, nah, I ain't doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, basically, to, round, to round, round out the week, basically, uh, Bitcoin hit, hit an all-time high, of course. Um, uh, that was the biggest thing, and then we're, we're just going through a bit of a retracement now. So... Uh, I, I basically keep keep an eye on, on long term trends. I, I basically live in the monthly charts because I'm managing sort of like my, my own portfolios. Um, and yeah, I, I basically have hardly any indicators. You, you mentioned RSI is a good one. Uh, I agree with that. Uh, I've got stochastics. 
that I, that I have up as a bit of a guide as well. But again, I don't try and predict the future. Um, I just stick with the long-term trend and adjust my portfolio accordingly. Uh, I just trade the, you know, the top 35, oh, it's the top, top 12, 14 assets um, that I've got the deepest liquidity. And I don't tra I don't tra trade it on the native chains. I bring it over to Pulse, or I bring it over to Bo uh, Binance cha Smart Chain for the fees. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some li good liquidity building up for bridged in assets like uh, bridged in ETH, bridged in um, uh, Bitcoin, from Ethereum, um, um, and then you know obviously you know they, 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 I want to be a hundred percent on on Pulse Chain for all my trades, and and I, I can see there's a future where we're going to get there too. But, um, Hell yeah. I like that yeah. sentiment. That's really good. I, I like that a lot. Yeah. I mean, I've got all, all my, all my closest contacts, they're all, they're all on Pulse Chain, you know? So, I mean, I've come from primarily Binance Smart Chain. Um, I spend a lot of time on Tron, you know, I've done, done that years ago, um, Binance Smart Chain, and then they've got some, some pretty good liquidity there. And when, with, with regards to traders, like, like, if if I'm building to large larger portfolios, uh, yeah, I, ne I need that I need to, that liquidity, and I don't mind owning some of that liquidity over on Pulse. You know, even if I have to do something or contribute with someone to to build it, uh, it's most of my conversations are sort of <laughs> directed directed at that with uh, any of the, the Dex founders I know, I know. So, but they all know what I think. So, uh, hopefully, we'll uh, over time it'll just we'll create protocols that build it or or build it ourselves. For, for the traders, for the spot traders, I don't do I don't do any leverage trading. Nice. Yeah, hopefully yeah. it just goes your way, and you don't have to do a bunch of work to make it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it, the it, best it, case scenario. <laughs> exactly. If you want, if you want the cheat sheet of what I do, is basically I just chuck on a monthly chart. I t I put it I add in. I got normal candles, and then I I add in sm smooth smooth like an ashy candles, and uh, it's got a very very uh, you know average smooth. Uh, trend and I just stay I just stay with that trend and I check it once a week and then if there's any check color change I just switch from that asset to that asset I chart trade against BTC and I, I trade against USD and I can go a hundred percent but like a, like an absolute logic that I follow a hundred percent into USD at the right time in the market or any corrections if they're strong enough and long enough or a hundred percent BTC and then a trade against those assets so um, it, it's interesting. Uh, I've got set rules and it's, it's working. I've been doing it for almost a year now. So, so, um, so when, so when you, you're asking about V3 liquidity, you're literally asking me uh, for your sake. <laughs> <laughs> well, well I, I can work with V2 liquidity, so that, that's fine. The reason I asked was, was mainly because um, I just see a lot of popularity with these, these YouTubers coming out you know, and having a like groups, like sorry, no, uh, an audience that it's basically that all they do is is um, you know provide liquidity themselves, and then they're doing this range optimization, like Aperture Finance, and a few companies like that. You know, they you can you can set up set up some rules about it, and um, you know, right. I, silver. Now, so yeah. I don't see. Okay, so this is kind of nefarious, if from what I'm hearing, right, on the influencers' behalf. Yeah. Yeah. So what's happening here when he's exposing his positions is he's what he's doing is is he's saying I support this price so other people that want to try to do liquidity and make fees may potentially go and overlap on top of him or at least over where his range is at and he'll be monitoring that the whole time and oh, if, yeah, yeah, if yeah. anybody gets any significant amount of money that's sitting on top of him where he sits at and, and it's rivaling where he's at then he can remove liquidity at that time and trap all those people at a lower price and then boom, <sighs> pump the price up, put all his liquidity at that higher price, leaving everybody uh, with one side down below. Now they need to buy in higher to play the game again. And he did that to all of his own people. That's so bad. Just the potential. Yes. Even if even if the, what I've seen, they're not doing that. The potential. I, I, I wonder if the, if the people are doing it possibly innocently realize how bad it can look from someone that knows what they're talking about. Wow. Yeah, from my point of view, right. They wouldn't want me talking about it because then it would ruin their whole show. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's so much to it. So much to it. Wow. 
Yeah. I'm glad I'm not, I'm glad I'm not on YouTube. <laughs> well, also, aren't you really glad that one 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 person out of the no the people who know shit is not going out there and doing that type of thing? Like, I'm yeah. not. I have no incentive to go and do yeah. that shit. I know that there is a profitability margin on the side, and if if, if I were to do something stupid like this, right? But yeah. I care about people. I have I have a I happen to have this rare thing that's like a hope for mankind, and I I get that from actually talking to fucking people. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I, th- I think everyone's got it, but some people just choose to ignore it until they like, just uh, end up in a heap somewhere and realize what they're doing it doesn't work long term it doesn't everyone finds out what you're all about eventually i mean if you're around long enough like you know there'll be one slide of thing that you do and they go they go oh and i'll give you the benefit of the doubt but like there's a like you, you've got to watch what's what people are saying and what, what people are doing and and people people are not stupid you know they, they pick up who's who who's who's you know who's, who's, who's shilling this uh, for their own personal gain and who's not yeah hopefully but um uh, <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> we ho- we can only hope. We can only hope. Um, thanks for everyone that stuck around so long. I, I did go a little bit over time, but it was a great conversation again. Uh, v- Executioner, um, Daniel from uh, True Deep, everyone that came on, including the hecklers, even though um, it was a little bit a um, little bit of angst there for a minute, and it was we really, really don't need more of it. But um, you know. Um, you know, we'll, we'll keep these conversations um, polite, and um, we can have differences of opinion. I, don't, I welcome that, um, and uh, let's just, you know, uh, not not not, not preach it to you guys, but uh, but let's. We'll, we'll, I'll just always try and keep it where where if you if you're going to come correct, then you can have disagreements or you know difference of opinion. We can talk it out and discuss some of the important things. You know, and touch touch a few nerves and <laughs> talk it out. <laughs> and then, you know what? I'll make this statement public with the few people that are left. Yeah, is I don't mind if you mute me. I'm perfectly fine with it. Sometimes I need it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, things things haven't escalated to that point yet. That's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, jeez. It's 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 like you want to try and set set the culture of a of a of a space and and I, I was I was try, I was trying I gave that guy every opportunity to, to sort of okay well, if you want to if you want to make your case um you know a bit of swearing going on but, and maybe a little bit personal too like you want to try and make your case but he wasn't making a case as you as you correctly said um it's like there's no point of you being here like what are you here for? I think he was drunk I mean I don't want to assume yeah. anything. I don't yeah. want to make any assumptions for anybody's behavior or whatever, give anybody an excuse for their behavior in which they chose to have publicly. But I think that the yeah. guy was drunk. And I think that he's also kind of known for doing that behavior. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I've had, I've had a, a, a inebriated people on, on the space before. You know, they, you know, they're just having a, getting charged a little bit on, and they're just about to head out or something for the evening or whatever. Um, yeah. and, and as the I, conversation goes that. on... <laughs> if you want to, if you want to toss back a, a cold one and and have a good time, great, like awesome. Yeah. But probably yeah. shouldn't try to speak publicly anywhere where a bunch of like investors and people who are taking things seriously or just want to learn something or be interested in a conversation. Yeah. They don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. it's it's like it's, it's like drunk texts. You don't, you just don't send send drunk texts. You know, you learn very early. <laughs> good, yeah. good spot. Plus it leaves proof. <laughs> You don't want to leave proof all over the place. Like that person's got that text now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, you, and, you, and you, you, you can't take it back. I had a, a close friend that uh, when it's, it's into some trouble like that, um, in the heat of the moment, he said something that it's like knock, knock, knock. Did you say? Oh no, he goes, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. it sort of sounded like he meant it. Uh, he goes, oh shit. Yeah. But anyway, right. uh, all right, good place to ra- round it out. And again, thanks for everyone for sticking around so long. Uh, we didn't give them over time. I'll try to keep them a little bit more to the hour, hour and a half. But uh, again, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, take care. Uh, see you later, guys.